follow my channel, you'll know that we like to cover advancements in emulation. And today, I wanted to bring you an update to PlayStation 2 emulation running on the Xbox Series and Xbox One line of consoles. Back in 2020, we covered PS2 games running under dev mode for the Xbox Series S via RetroArch, specifically the PCSX2 core that ran for it, and it was quite impressive, especially as this was the first time PS2 emulation was running on a game console. But it did come with some limitations, setting up was quite tedious, and some games did not run at great performance. Well, all that has changed thanks to a major update. PCSX2 is now available on the Xbox as a completely standalone app. This work was done by Stenzek, who was responsible for the incredible Duck Station PlayStation 1 emulator that we've also covered on the channel before. In short, PCSX2 standalone is absolutely amazing, and once again offers a fantastic PS2 emulation experience for the Xbox, but with the added features, notably the ability to increase native resolutions to 4K and beyond. Running PS2 games with native internal 4K upscaling at full speeds is quite incredible. Now we mentioned that PCSX2 was originally available as a part of RetroArch, but of May of 2022, Stenzek updated PCSX2 as a standalone app, and with it brought over a native UWP app with many enhancements, and updated the UI to be similar to that of DuckStation. Stenzek has not yet released a public version of PCSX2, however, that hasn't stopped the community working on branches of PCSX2. And what you're seeing here is the emulator known as XBSX2, a fork of PCSX2 built specifically for the Xbox as a UWP app that runs once again under developer mode. XBSX2 can be downloaded from the GitHub page and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. You can easily install it via developer mode on your Xbox Series console. Now I should point out, you can probably run XBSX2 on an Xbox One or One X, but it's going to run quite slow. And as such, I'd recommend an Xbox Series S at the least. And in this video, that's exactly what we're running. Now, before you do anything PS2 emulation related, you'll need to install a PS2 BIOS and some game images. Of course, this is out of scope for this episode, but you can easily dump your PS2 BIOS with a simple tutorial, and I will leave a link to a good one in the description below. And dumping PS2 games with a DVD drive is quite easy to do as well. Now, in the past, using dev mode with RetroArch, the only way possible to play PS2 games was to copy them directly to the internal SSD. But with XBSX2, you can connect up an external USB 3.0 drive and load your games, as well as your PS2 BIOS from there, which means setting up and playing the emulator is so much easier than before. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at some of the improvements that you'll get from XBSX2 over the older PS2 core that ran on RetroArch. And the first thing that you'll notice is that performance across the board is significantly increased. And a great example of this is my old favorite that I like to test games on, and that is OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast. Now with the original RetroArch build at native PS2 resolution, it was not capable of playing at 60 frames per second. Now, when we run XBSX2, we easily lock at 60 FPS at native PS2 resolutions. In fact, we can double the resolution to 2X and still lock at 60 FPS. And in fact, every game that I tested that ran on the original RetroArch PS2 core runs at substantially better frame rates, leaving plenty of overhead to increase internal resolutions all the way up to 4K. Some other really cool updates that have occurred on PCSX2 over the past 12 months that have made their way to XBSX2 are in the form of rendering fixes. One notable standout for me is Burnout 3. There's a long-standing bug that the skybox in Burnout 3 was not visible. But the great news here is that on XBSX2, as you can see, the skybox issue has been addressed and the game looks and runs fantastic, near perfect. Now, one game that does have noticeable texture issues is Ridge Racer 5. Playing the game, you'll notice that all cars on the track have severe texture issues. 
And this is something that can be addressed by switching the emulation to software-based rendering. And the good news is XBSX2 has a very simple toggle when you select the pause menu, you can pick the option to switch to software-based rendering and this problem will go away. Now, in about 95% of cases, you'll never need to use software rendering, but in the instance of any texture issues, switching over to software rendering will simply eliminate it. The downside, however, is that you will not be able to internally upscale resolutions, but it will be a faithful as possible representation of an original PS2 game. Now, when it comes to internal resolutions, there is a couple of things that I do want to mention. If you're running XBSX2 with an Xbox Series X, then setting the internal resolution to 4K is the sweet spot. However, on the Series S that has a weaker overall GPU, in my experience, 4K is much too high for the Xbox Series S. And in many cases, you'll notice that the frame rates will start to drop. And it's for this reason that I recommend if you're running an Xbox Series S, then set the internal resolution to 2K or 1440p. You'll get about 97% of games running at 60 frames per second. In some cases, you can still increase the internal resolution to 4K and still maintain 60 FPS. Now, the great thing about this update is the enhanced UI. There are so many different options to configure each game individually to really dial in the appropriate settings per game. And this is really great for experimentation as well if you want to learn more about what some of the options actually do. There are also options to both overclock and underclock the Sony PlayStation 2 CPU. And this can provide performance benefits in some instances. And overall, the amount of bug fixes and performance improvements really make XBSX2 a compelling emulator for you to run on your Xbox Series S. And I should mention that the Xbox is still the best way to play PlayStation 2 games on your console. We're still waiting for Sony to offer up at least one PlayStation 2 game as a part of their PlayStation Plus Premium service that was released earlier this year. So in conclusion, just like Duck Station, I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing with XBSX2. The ability to internally upscale resolutions and have high performance PlayStation 2 games on a $299 Xbox Series S is nothing short of amazing. There's been tons of work done on PS2 emulation over the past 4 months and it's really great to see. And I'll definitely continue to cover this topic for you guys on the channel as more updates appear in future. But for now, we are going to leave it here for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'll leave relevant links to everything that you saw in the description below. But for now, guys, if you like this episode, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.